Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today, Nvidia's next gen architecture is already coming. Vega 64 can beat the 3090. Sort of. The 3080 Ti delayed. Intel's first 7 nanometer CPU and their new monster GPU crushes Nvidia's best. Okay, it's news time, man. First up for today, Nintendo's ever popular Switch console recently passed the four year old mark, meaning it's about time for something new. Currently, the system comes with a fairly old Tegra X1 Plus chip, and while it's proven how much optimization can truly help with older hardware, the Switch is certainly sacrificing a lot for that portability. In comes the new reports of a 2021 Switch Pro console. Now, the Pro part likely means the older Switch will still be supported, but there's some interesting new tidbits. For one, according to a new report by Bloomberg, the upcoming Switch comes with a 7-inch display and actually supports 4K when docked, using NVIDIA's DLSS upscaling tech. And that means it obviously uses one of NVIDIA's newest architectures with tensor cores. Well, in a new tweet by copite 7 Kimmy, he claimed that it would be NVIDIA's next-gen architecture. Later, the user clarified that it's only one portion that could use the next-gen Ada Lovelace, but still, that's a big deal. Either way, the upcoming Pro model is definitely looking like a big upgrade over the current base model. Time, as always, will tell. But first, I just noticed that less than 33% of those who watch my videos are subscribed. So what are you waiting for? If you like gaming hardware and enjoy the channel, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you can be notified when I release a new video. It really helps the channel out. Next up for today, we have a pretty huge follow-up to Hardware Unbox's video that showed AMD's GPUs are way faster when CPU bottlenecked. Basically, Nvidia's driver requires more CPU processing power. Well, in a new article by GameGPU.com, they ran some tests of their own, and to say they're interesting is definitely an understatement. In the article, they compared an RTX 3090 to a Vega 64 liquid-cooled GPU. And as you can see, in multiple games, the Vega 64 is able to get a massive advantage over the RTX 3090. Now, with that said, keep in mind that these are only at 720p and with a Ryzen 3600X set to just 3 GHz. So obviously, this isn't a real, everyday type of test. It's just to show how much of a difference there can be when your CPU is the bottleneck. If anything, it proves just how important it is to ensure all of your components are in the same league. Of course, when it comes to gaming, the GPU is still the most important part. Next up, Nvidia's upcoming RTX 3080 Ti is a GPU that's been rumored to be in the works since Nvidia first announced their RTX 3000 series of GPUs. Back then, it was technically the 20GB RTX 3080, but that was later canned. Since then, we've seen spec changes to delays, with the most recent news claiming the GPU would launch in mid-April. Well, according to a new report from IT Home, NVIDIA internally announced that the 3080 Ti will in fact be delayed again. This time, it's set for a release in the middle of May. Maybe they're trying to hold off a bit to get more stock, I'm not sure, but at least we won't have to wait too much longer. And next up for today, during the recent Intel Unleashed event, the company's new CEO, Pat Gelsinger, had a lot to say, and some of it was actually really interesting. For starters, the company announced that they're going to be investing a whopping $20 billion into building two new fabs in Arizona. Not only that, but he confirmed that Intel's first desktop lineup built on their new 7 nanometer technology called Meteor Lake will begin taping out in the second quarter of this year, with a release in 2023. Now, what's even more interesting than the 7 nanometer part is that it's set to come with Intel's new Favaros 3D packaging technology. Remember that Favaros is more or less Intel's answer to AMD's chiplet design. They basically take modules called tiles that can stack on top of one another to create a single processor. And like AMD, Intel is able to use different processes for each tile, so they aren't forced to use the most expensive process for parts that don't need it. It also allows for easily scalable designs like AMD's Zen architecture. And of course, while the technologies are different, Intel is likely regretting that whole glue comment from a little while back. And the news on Intel doesn't stop there. In fact, today's final story gets even bigger. 
literally, as a new video was shared right after the event by Intel's own Raja Kaduri. And as you can see, it's of Intel's upcoming monster GPU called Ponte Vecchio. And during it, this pops up. Now, for those who don't know, Intel's Ponte Vecchio is a GPU accelerator that's been in the works for a couple years, and like their upcoming Meteor Lake CPUs, it's built off of their Favros packaging technology. Now, Intel has been touting exascale performance for a little while now, but in that tweet from Raja Kaduri, he actually stated that Ponte Vecchio is, quote, petaflops in your palm, and the company has apparently claimed it gets petaflops class AI performance in a single GPU. And moving back to this slide, it's not too hard to see why. For starters, the GPU is built from a whopping 47 tiles. Oh, and it also comes with 100 billion transistors. For context, NVIDIA's newest A100 accelerator comes with 54 billion transistors. Really, I think that shows just how advanced Intel's packaging technology is, and it really could be a great sign for the future of both Intel's mainstream CPUs and their upcoming discrete GPUs. Either way, Intel's upcoming GPU, set to debut in the Aurora supercomputer at the end of the year, is an absolute monster of a GPU. So while that does it for today, are you excited for Intel's upcoming foray into the GPU market, or are you just still trying to buy a GPU yourself? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, definitely make sure to check out the GamerMail Discord server. And as always, have a great day!